Greetings and salutations, all I.S. Anderson here once again, and I'm going to do something today I haven't done in a long time. I'm going to do a book review. So you take the book Twilight, attach a hose and suck out all the perfume and kittens and flowers and Sephora and pretty unicorns, then squish back in a bunch of gasoline and dynamite and nitroglycerin and bar fights and explosions and ball sweat, and you get Good Intentions by Elliot Kay. Yes, in a nutshell, this book is Twilight for Guys. Now hold on, hold on, wait, 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 before you click off because you're turned off by the thought of it being Twilight, let me just give you a brief synopsis of the book. While taking photos in a graveyard for a class project, Alex Carlyle stumbles across two women and saves them from a horrific fate. In the process, he becomes magically bonded to them. Their names are Lorelai and Rachel. Rachel happens to be an angel, while Lorelai is a succubus. Because of the magical bond, Lorelai is forced to live with Alex, and eventually they do develop a romantic relationship. Of course, having a relationship with a succubus does have some unforeseen difficulties, namely attracting the attention of vampires, werewolves, witches, and eventually other demons. Fortunately for Alex, he does have a very loyal group of friends, two of which are ex-military, in addition to his succubus girlfriend and a guardian angel who may or may not develop a relationship with him as well. Now, despite what you may think, Alex isn't some passive blank slate that, you, that the male readers just unzip and wear like a skin so they can live out his fantasy. He does take an active role in his own defense and does have a lot of agency with his actions. Now, his relationship with Lorelai, I mean, it is pretty unusual, but even still, you do I did find it easy to sort of get behind it. There was a good sense of the loyalty between their two, and you did, and there was a genuine feeling of these two generally do care for each other, and you do see a love building up between them, even though the circumstances are really bizarre. Some of you might be wondering, well, what about Rachel? Does he develop anything with her? Best I can say is, you gotta read and find out, but it definitely is worth the price of admission. Also, the dynamic between Lorelai and Rachel is very interesting, too. I mean, they are similar in some ways, but in a lot of ways, they're the exact polar opposites of each other. Lorelai is very eloquent. She has a grace about her in the way she speaks and just her demeanor, the way it comes off the page. Lorelai is basically the woman that you want on your arm when you go to a very sophisticated party and you're rubbing elbows with the top brass, and she probably ends up impressing them a lot more than you do. Rachel, on the other hand, she's a lot more down to earth, shall we say. She's a lot more crass. She's a lot more streetwise. She prefers to grant to greet her fellow angels with the phrase, sup bitches. Rachel is basically the girl that you go to the everyday events with, and you probably have a lot of fun taking her to a bar. And the only problem is she'd probably start a bar fight, but at least she could probably win it for you. The only thing that I didn't personally like about it so much was that there was a lot of sequences or chapters where uh, you see Alex's past lives which is interesting the first few times you see him, but the thing is, it's just they drag on an awfully long time and you're reading about characters that, while they are Alex, you don't really care. I mean, it always ends up the same. The ending to these stories is always the same, and eventually I found myself skipping these. But other people might find them very interesting, and they do kind of add to the story. One thing I do think it's necessary to bring up, this book does have very explicit depictions of sex and sexuality. In fact, in the, in the description of this book on Amazon, it actually lists a whole bunch of stuff that it gives you explicit warning about. Let me read some of them just to give you an idea of what it is. Good Intentions contains explicit sexuality, violence, nudity, inappropriate use of church properties, portrayals of beings divine and demonic bearing little or no resemblance to established religion or mythology, dead animals, desecrated graves, gang activity, theft, assault and battery, panties, illegal use of firearms within the city, polyamory, abuse of authority, yeah, I know. Some people might turn that up, but of course, you know, guys like me are drawn to stuff like that, so of course I got it. This book was primarily intended for a male audience, so guys, if this sounds interesting to you, you should definitely check it out, and women, of course, are welcome to check it out if you find it interesting. And if you don't, but you know some guys that are reluctant on reading, then maybe you could steer them toward this. Maybe this could entice them to get them to start reading. So to sum up, it's got good action, cool characters, and enough naughty parts to keep your interest. I do give this a five-star rating with, you know, the above consideration. So I'll leave a link to Good Intentions in the Abyss with all my other pertinent contact information, as I always do. 
And as always, please comment, rate, subscribe. You know the drill. And until next time, this is Zaya Sanderson telling everybody, make your lives grand and have a good day. Thank you very much. <laughs>